Before Gord Downey would become the front man of one of the most popular Canadian rock bands of all time, the Tragically Hip. It's a beautiful country, it's a big country, and it's a free country, and it's a place where you can decide what you think the country is. Before Gord Downey would bring attention to Canadian historical mistreatment of its indigenous people. You will learn about true history in these schools. Now, the pain, the torture, and the death. Before Gord Downey would heroically battle terminal brain cancer while undertaking one last tour with the Tragically Hip in 2016. My memories, which used to be my forte, used to be my, oh, and now I can't remember hardly anything I have. I have Peter written on my. Has there ever been a more riveting rock and roll performer than Gordon Edgar Downey? Well, there's certainly never been a more captivating Canadian rock star. I can tell you that. Now today, you might be able to choose from any one of the ton of the tragically hit performances to view online, but trust me when I say experiencing Downey's art that way, it simply doesn't do it justice. In order to really get a sense of who he was and what he meant to the legion of the tragically hit fans, well, you had to be there in the moment to truly feel his energy. Even after being diagnosed with glioblastoma, an extremely fast acting and deadly type of brain cancer, well Downey, he traveled across Canada drawing out every last bit of happiness he could from his fans who were preemptively mourning his loss. Now no major performer in history of pop music has even undertaken such a venture while seriously ill. And yet it was only one of Gore Downey's unprecedented achievements. We got lots to get through. To look back on the massive success and the legacy that is the Tragically Hip, well, the band members will actually be stopping by before their famous studio a little later this week. Now, we're gonna delve a little deeper into the band's come up. Of course, we're gonna talk about Gord, but we're also gonna open up the Deluxe Edition box set for Road Apples, and they're gonna be giving us a whole lot of insider information that true fans have never heard before. Now, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, be sure to do so. We're gonna be dropping that interview on Sunday, but for now, let's get into this Gone But Not Forgotten on Gord Downey. Gord Downey was born on February 6, 1964 in Amherstview, Ontario. Now Amherstview is a town only a few miles west of Kingston, Ontario, the one-time former capital city of Canada. Now by the time Gord came into the world in the 1960s, well Kingston it was just another relatively small town compared to cities like Toronto or Ottawa. Now as for Amherstview, well coming from there would play a large part in shaping who Downey was. Now he once told McLean's Magazine, I came from a rural area. I wouldn't say it's given me a stigma, but it's something that's always stayed with me, not actually being from Kingston. Now Gord was born to his parents, Lorna and Edgar. Now Edgar, he was a traveling salesman turned real estate developer. And Gord, he was their fourth of five children. His older siblings include Mike, Charlene, and Paul, while his younger brother's name is Patrick. Now as a kid, Gord, he would take part in Canadian national pastimes. Of course, I'm talking hockey. And he served as the goalie for the local Amherstview team. He even won a provincial B-level championship. But how did he get so good? Well, Harry Sinden, the man who would one day lead the Boston Bruins to a Stanley Cup win, as well as Team Canada to a victory at the 1972 Summit Series against Russia, well, that was Gord's godfather. So my guess is, well, he got some pretty good pointers along the way. When it came time to uh, <clears throat> find a spiritual guide or advisor for me, which is what a godfather is supposed to be, uh, they asked Harry and Eleanor if they would be godparents to me and my brother, Pat. And, uh, I think he's done very well at uh, the spiritual guide. Now as he grew older, well Downey attended Kingston Collegiate Vocational Institute, a high school that has seen such important Canadian alumni as John A. McDonald, Robertson Davies, and Don Cherry graduate from its hollowed halls. My God, they had, the, the Prime Minister was there. That's wild. Also Don Cherry, another legend. It was while attending school in his teenage years that Downey joined a punk band called The Slinks. Now at that time, the band's biggest competition was another grade 13 band called The Rodents. Now that band featured bassist Gord Sinclair and guitarist Robbie Baker. Meanwhile, eventually the tragically hip drummer Johnny Fay, well he was a grade 9 student who watched these older dudes perform at local schools and he was blown away by their ability. And before long, the Slinks and the Rodents, they would fall by the wayside, but Downey, Sinclair, Baker and Fay, they would team up to form a new band. Now the Tragically Hip, they were born in November of 1984 and they played their first show in a small white room at the Kingston Artist Association. The following year, another student from the same school, Paul Langlois, well he would befriend Downey and join the ranks of the band. Soon after Downey, he was studying film at Queen's University, from which he would eventually graduate with a Bachelor of Arts in Science. This was in the spring of 1986, which for the record is the same year in which I was born. No one asked about his time at Queen's and what it taught him. Well, Gord, he simply replied, mostly I learned how to drink. That must be another Canadian thing, I'm not sure. 
Now over the band's first three years, well, they played a bunch of cover songs in venues all around Queens campus. Songs by the Rolling Stones, Otis Redding, Marvin Gaye, and even the Monkees. They draw a crowd in with recognizable tunes and then Gord's onstage talent for improvisation. It would take over. And in this way, little by little, well, the Tragically Hip transformed into their own distinct entity. Gentlemen, would you welcome from the penitentiary capital of the world, I want to rouse the applause for the Tragically Hip. The Tragically Hip would drop their first EP in December of 1987, and not long after, well, they would record their debut studio album, 1989's Up To Here, which was recorded in Memphis, Tennessee. But when The Hip first debuted, it was to a decidedly mixed reaction. Now this dressed down, no frills band, it wasn't what MTV was looking for, but anyone who ever attended one of their live performances knew how special they were, especially Gord. His unique and singular charisma, not to mention improvisational skills, well, it would electrify entire audiences, whether they're performing at a biker bar or at a student pub. When Gord got on the stage, you knew it, I mean, with his sort of spastic movement and stuff, but my biggest recollection of Gord in those days is he used to sweat so bad he'd be soaked. By the time the show was over, I mean, water would be running off his hair. By the time he finally came into his own on 1991's Road Apples and took over all lyrical responsibilities for the band, well, Gord, he really began to showcase his talent. And while most lead singers are used to audiences singing the chorus of their most popular songs back at them, well, Gord, he was one of the few who would often hear every line of his song being sung by the adoring crowd. <laughs> Of course, as I mentioned in the intro, the band will be coming into studio. We're gonna be talking a whole lot more about Road Apples, so be sure to stay tuned for our interview. It is dropping on Sunday. I wanna talk about the original title of Saskadelphia. If you went with that, how do you think things might have played out? Would it have been any different? <laughs> it's really hard to say. I mean, that was, uh, Johnny originally suggested that title, and it was kind of a reflection of where we were at at that point, touring around with for uh, up to here, and we never really, we were playing like five nights a week, never really knew where we were. Um, and someone had said in the van, like, where are you, where are we tonight? And Johnny said, Saskadelphia, you know, and, and we thought it was hilarious. It kind of was very North American and it made a lot of sense for us at the time. And, and the record company actually hated, they, they hated it. They didn't want to use it. And, and, um, so we suggested, well, why don't we, you know, they thought it was too Canadian sounding. Um, we said, well, why don't we call it, you know, road apples? And they loved that. Not knowing, of course, that for Canadians, road apples are frozen pieces of horse you play hockey with in the winter. By 1992, in the release of their album fully completely, well, the hip would reach the mountaintop, eventually moving enough copies of the album to go certified diamond. Now, from that point on, well, the hip, they were off and running, creating 10 for their albums, seven of which would reach the top of the Canadian sales charts. Eventually, in 2001, well, Gord, he would take something of a left turn when he embarked on his first solo album, Coke Machine Glow. Compiled of songs that his hip bandmates had rejected over the years, as well as original verses taken from an accompanying book of poetry that he released at the same time. Now this album, it was far removed from the normal type of music that the hip produced. In fact, it left both the press and longtime hip fans somewhat lukewarm. But among his musical peers, well, the first solo project remains Gord's most cherished accomplishments. Now, throughout the rest of the 2000s, well, Gord, he would occasionally drop a new solo album as a sort of release valve for the pressure of his career with the hip. It was also around this time that the band's sales and radio play, they began to decline, but never enough to make them to be considered an afterthought. Now, as he became an elder statesman on the music scene, well, Gord, he also began to focus more and more on his side passions, like turning his attention to environmental issues, especially those being investigated by Lake Ontario Waterkeeper, a Canadian water charity run by former Queen's University classmate, Mark Matson. Now, while Downey often felt like he didn't belong at these types of events at first, well, he quickly made it a point to educate himself on the topics, and of course, would become a vocal proponent for change. It just resonated with me. Anyway, I'd lost contact with the lake and with the water and just assumed it was belonged to someone else, but in fact it doesn't. It belongs to us. It's in the commons. You know, all this stuff. In 2016, Downey, he undertook what he considered to be the most important thing he would ever accomplish. The release of his album, The Secret Path. Now this addressed the legacy of residential schools in Canadian history. In particular, this work includes the story of Chenny Wenjack, a 12 year old boy who froze to death while trying to walk 600 kilometers back to his home and the family that he was taken from. Knowing that he had the country's full attention after the hip's farewell tour, well Downey, he spent the last few months of his life shining a spotlight on this important topic. Now speaking about the importance of this project to his brother Patrick Downey, well, he told the CBC. His main focus was the release of Secret Path. 
This is not to take away from anything he did on that farewell tour with the hip, but this is what he really wanted to see to the end, the secret path and getting it out there. It really was his biggest wish. Now as we come to the end, will it would be impossible not to discuss the life and times of Gord Downey without bringing up his triumphant battle against cancer and his remarkable final tour as part of the Tragically Hip. While recording what would become the hip's final studio album, Man Machine Poem, while well, Downey, he would spend a lot of time visiting his ailing father in Kingston. Then in November of 2015, Will Edgar, he passed away. Only three days after attending his funeral, Will Gord, he suffered a seizure. Gord has a primary brain tumor. This is one that started from within the brain itself. It's not cancer that is spread from another part of the body. And these primary brain tumors are infiltrative by nature. At a Kingston hospital, he would be diagnosed with primary glioblastoma, an aggressive and fatal brain cancer. Now for months afterwards, Downey, he fought the disease with cranotomies, chemo, and radiation. But sadly, none of it would work. In May of 2016, the band, they would announce not only Gord's illness, but his intentions to tour and promote their final album. What followed was the transformation of Gord Downey from an aging rock star into a tragic hero of mythic proportions. Not only would every hip fan make their way to see one final show, but people with no former association with the band, but who had been touched personally by the curse of cancer, also chose to take part in the celebration of this man's brave fight. Now for those people in attendance at each stop along the way, well it was like getting invited to take part in a living wake. Now fans throughout the country, they wondered if Downey would make it all the way to the end, and of course, the man did. On August 20th, 2017, in front of 20,000 people in and outside of the K-Rock Center in Kingston, and with more than 11 million people watching live on the CBC, well, the Tragically Hip, they performed together one final time. In the following months, we would see the release of The Secret Path in September, and then in December of that year, the Assembly of First Nations would honor Downey with the Lakota spirit name, Wakapi Omani, or the man who walks among the stars. On October 17, 2017, Gord Downey became the very embodiment of his spirit name when he passed away with his children and his family by his side. We here, before they are famous, have missed him every day alongside all the rest of you. And few artists, they meant as much to an entire nation, and even fewer stood for the types of important things that Gord dedicated so much of his last remaining months to. Rest in peace, Gord Downey. You will be missed, always. Okay, we're gonna end that video there on a, on a somber note. Of course, if you're a true The Tragically Hip fan, you're gonna wanna hear what the band members have to say when they sit down with me. So that interview, of course, we're gonna touch on Gord. How could you not? We're gonna be discussing Road Apples and uh, you know, it's, we're, we're getting to the anniversary of Gord's passing. So, you know, it's all, it's all very touching. Anyways, I'll see you guys in another video. Bye.